The Lord be with you. And also with you. What a joy it is to come to God's house and be with my fellow saints here at St. Paul's. It's been a while, but what a joy to come. And, and I pray that Pastor Matt and Mary Ann get some good rest that they well deserve. Today we celebrate the new year. Happy New Year. It, yeah, and that is the first Sunday of Advent. And we're going to uh, have some interesting readings today, and we'll try them all together as we celebrate, as we celebrate this first um, Sunday in Advent. I don't have my stole on because when I uh, was a pastor, we had purple for Advent, and I don't have a blue stole, so I... <laughs> So I, instead of saying, well, he's wearing a purple stole, <laughs> I don't have a blue one. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, so uh, that is uh, why I don't wear my stole today. But in the old days, it was, Advent was more of a penitential time. But I do want you to reflect on why our Lord came and the mystery of God made flesh dwelling with us. God bless you in your worship today. Thank you, Laura, for playing. And thank you, Bell Choir, for playing for the first service and then now, shortly. <coughs> and we'll have the ringing of the bell. Thank you. We sing our praise to our Lord by singing uh, hymn number 331, The Advent of Our King.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near to the true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father. Beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I'll confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you. Upon this your confession, I, by the virtue of my office, as a called, ordained servant of the word, announce unto you the grace of God, and in the stead and in the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous in having salvation.
The Lord be with you. With thy spirit. And let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the first Sunday in Advent is from Isaiah chapter 2. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It came to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be lifted up above the hills, and all the nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways that he may walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing now hymn number 122. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing Within your gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem's built, Jerusalem built as a city That is bound firmly together. To which the tribes of the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. Their thrones for judgment were set, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secured who be within in your walls and security within your towers. But my brothers and companions, I will say peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Glory be to the As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from Romans chapter 13. Besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we believed. The night is far gone, and the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness, and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies or drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy. 
But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand for the holy, for the hallelujah and the holy gospel. One note is that the Holy Gospel reading is different than what's recorded in your bulletin. Uh, when I, uh, when Pastor Matt asked me to um, do the service, I, I uh, uh, assumed that it was going to be another reading, and so I prepared, and then it was different than what was in your bulletin. So I'm going to read my text today for the Holy Gospel reading, and that is for the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem, they came to Bethage, the Mount of Olives. And Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you. And immediately you'll find a donkey tied and the colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he'll send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put it on them, their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee, the gospel of our Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our sermon hymn.
Grace, mercy, peace be unto you from God our Father, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text today is from the Gospel reading just read. And the crowds that went before Jesus and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we entered Jerusalem. The whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. This is our text. Please be seated. Start now at the end of the book. That's not how you read a book. You start at the beginning. You start from getting ready for Jesus to be born in Bethlehem. What is this strange pastor filling in for Pastor Matt today, starting at the end, or close to the end, with Jesus coming up to Jerusalem, riding on a donkey? It has everything to do, it has everything to do with the first Sunday of Advent. Why are we getting ready for Christmas is because every one of you know the end of the story. And the end of the story is this, that Jesus Christ rides into Jerusalem and by Friday he's hanging from a cross to take away the sins of the whole world. My sin, your sin. Christ dies. The King of glory Heaven came down and burst forth into this world. First, being born in the Virgin Mary. The King of glory, the God of God, the King of kings, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, the glory of God who made heaven and earth, became humble. How humble? That the Holy Spirit impregnated a young virgin girl, betrothed to Joseph, and the word was made flesh as St. John said, and dwelt among us. From heaven above to earth I come. How? In majesty? No. In a humble birth. How humble? Well, he didn't even was born in a home. He was born in a stable. Laid in a manger. And his layette was not a beautiful, beautiful gown, but wrapped in swaddling clothes. Wrapped. Jesus came. He comes. All through this readings today. You hear the word come. We hear, behold, the king has come to you righteous and having salvation. We read in Psalm 22, 122, that they were going up to Jerusalem. Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one purpose. And that purpose was to take away the sins of the world. To become a humble servant. To become lower than what you ever thought of becoming low. Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin for us. He had no crime. But God so loved the world, he sent his one and only Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Our Lord, our Savior, comes 
in lowliness. And that is my theme today in this sermon, that Jesus came. He comes, and he will come again. He came. Isaiah prophesied this. He gives us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He comes in God's name to forgive sinners. Who did he announce? Who did God announce this birth? Shepherds out in the field watching their flock by night. He didn't go to Jerusalem and tell King Herod and said, hey, you got a new king here in town. That Herod would later go on and kill all the babies of Bethlehem, three years and under. Jesus announced it to dirty shepherds. The humblest of all. And then they did announce it to the kings or to the wise men. They weren't of his own people. They were people from Babylonia up in the north country and they had to come down to Bethlehem to see the king. And they were so confused that they ended up going to Jerusalem and knocking on King Herod's door, and said, where is this king of the Jews? Well, of course, that scared old Herod all he wanted, because he wanted to be king, and so he called a council and got his cabinet together and said, hey, there's supposed to be a new king in town and around. Where is he supposed to be born? They all got together. All they had to do was look in scriptures and go to the book of Michael, and they find that he was to be born in Bethlehem of Judea, the least of all the cities. When Jesus came, all we can see is humbleness. Just as he made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, riding on on a donkey. Well, not just even a donkey. It was a colt of a donkey. You can't get much lower than that. From a lowly birth to a lowly entrance into the city. And you know what they called that city? City of Zion. God's city. Remember when the children of Israel would go from Egypt to the promised land. God was with them. He was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night so that they would be guided. And also he was with them in the holy, or the tabernacle, which contained the Ten Commandments, the rod of Aaron, and the manna. And God hovered over that and the children of Israel. And then when they got settled in the new land and Jerusalem became his home, David said, why can't you have a temple like everybody else in the country, in the area countryside? And God said, no, David, can't do that with you, but I'll use your son Solomon. And Solomon built the temple in the city of Zion, the city of God. Read it in the book of Kings and read all the things that happened and all the marvelous things and God came and rested in the Holy of Holies above that Ark of the Covenant. And there he dwelt. And you know the rest of the story and that story is that the children of Israel fell away from God And the temple was desecrated, and finally, the Babylonians came and knocked the whole thing down. It was rebuilt at the time of Nehemiah and Ezra. And they rebuilt it, and they dedicated it again. Only to have King Herod come, and he was going to make the new improved temple. Nothing is recorded that the Lord dwelt there with 
with Herod and his temple that he rebuilt, losing all the glory. But the contrast of the story is that Jesus comes. He is the Mount Zion. All these readings today, when we talk about Jerusalem, all the readings, go home and read them again, and you can put the word Jesus there, who had made flesh to dwell among us. The heavenly Jerusalem was going, the heavenly Jerusalem, Jesus, God's very own son going into Jerusalem. That was the purpose from the beginning, from the time of Adam and Eve, that he was going to come. And the prophecies of the prophet was fulfilled in a manger and humbly healing bringing back the life. And the people said, this is so ridiculous. How can somebody from Nazareth, even one of his disciples said, what good? What good, as Nathaniel said, could come out of Nazareth? They couldn't believe that Jesus could really be the Messiah because they were expecting a guy in a white horse and chargers and all this other stuff and really lay it in and and knock off those Romans once and for all. But it didn't work that way. Here comes Jesus with that ragtag group from the Mount of Bethage down into the Kidron Valley and up to Jerusalem. And the people praised God and said, Hosanna. They recognized that this was the true king. And when they went down and they said, Hosanna, the king of David, the son of David, Hosanna in the highest, they were praising him like a great king. And the echo from the valley was shouting into the Jerusalem, this was the king. And you should have seen the scribes and the Pharisees shake and had to do something but quick and in fact Caiaphas said we better get rid of this guy and kill Jesus or else we'll all die and they tried and eventually Jesus made his own mount not Mount Zion where that temple that Herod built but on the lowliest mountain you could find, and that is Mount Calvary. There, the King of Glory died for our salvation. All the way through the Gospels, we see humble Jesus, focused, fixing his eyes on the cross, that he loved us so much that he would send his own, that he would die for us. He, without sin, became sin for us, so that sin, death, and the power of the devil may be defeated once and for all. Our Savior, he came. And as proof positive, that that sacrifice was complete, three days later he rose from the dead, busting down the walls of sin, death, and the power of the devil for our salvation. That is the total Christmas story. To focus just on the birth is to miss the whole thing. It's a holy wonder of heaven above. To earth I come with one mission, with you in mind, for salvation. Jesus comes to us today. You came here, and you say, come, Lord Jesus. Many of you at your mealtime will say, come Lord Jesus, be our guest. We say Jesus comes, and he doesn't leave you empty hand. 
or the eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open their hands and satisfy the desire of everything. That's because Jesus has come. And also, Jesus comes with his physical bounty to each and every one of us. That he comes to us in word and sacrament. You come here today to be fed the bread of life. The holy word, the holy absolution of the forgiveness of sins, the true body and blood of Christ, true God, true man, given to us, something that we can't even, that we can't even comprehend. But he gives it to us, that we might receive it, not by our minds, but by the faith implanted in us by our holy baptism to know and be assured that we may be his own and live under him in his kingdom with all the trials and tribulations of this world. When you were baptized, you were set out to live your life only to find a world full of pain, a lot of sorrow, a lot of death, a lot of disappointments. In fact, we call this life the church militant. We call it a pilgrimage from this earthly kingdom with God by our side that will never leave us to our heavenly home. Christ came, Christ comes. He comes to us new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Great is the Lord, and worthy to be praised. Daily, he comes and promises us that he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us. Be faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crown of life. One of the things that are opposite, I talked about Advent season being a time of our Lord's humble coming. But he's going to come again, this time in all glory. And as we confess to judge the living, I like that word quick, and the dead. That means you're still kicking. <laughs> that you are living and the dead. Don't worry. Christ reminds you daily that you are his child. That you are Jesus' little lamb. And you can walk confidently, knowing that that judgment day will come. And our Father will look at you cross-eyed. Only through the cross of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And he says, come. It's all prepared. That final glory that we who are pilgrims here on earth can say, I'm a stranger here, heaven is my home. And he will come again, this time in all the glory that you cannot even imagine. Not in a manger, but he's going to come with the army of angels to take us in his loving arms. Yes, Jesus came, he comes today, and he will come again. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let me see. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. Amen. We sing now our offering hymn.
we give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone. A trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. Please stand for prayer. Stir up your power, O Lord, to rescue us from the dangers of this dark world by the advent of your Son, that we may ever walk in his light and learn the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy, Gracious Lord, though we do not know the day or hour of your Son's appearing, grant that we always be prepared by sending us faithful pastors and teachers who will boldly proclaim your word of law and gospel to us, that we may constantly be encouraged and build up at the faith. Lord, in your mercy, God of Jacob, you have established your kingdom as a beacon to call all nations into yourself. Teach us to walk in the light of your presence, Lord, in your mercy. O oh, Lord of love, visit our homes and defend us from the temptation to walk in the works of darkness, that husbands and wives may love one another and raise their children in faith. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, you are the authority to whom all temporal authorities must bow. Give wisdom and godly insight to our president, our governor, and all who make a minister or judge our laws. Grant peace among the nations that swords may be beaten into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. Lord, in your mercy, Compassionate Lord, look with mercy upon the sick. Visit them during these days of Advent to comfort them with your saving gospel. And if your will, grant healing and comfort to the family of Audrey Ritter, David Schmidt, Gary Pyrick, Nikki Burnell, and Mike Price. and all we pray for in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, draw us unto yourself, O Lord. Gather around the holy body and precious blood of your Son in this sacrament of the altar. Sustain us in the saving faith that we may eat and drink for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O loving Father, you alone know the day and the hour when our Lord Jesus Christ will come again in glory. Keep us steadfast in the one true faith that we may be ever ready for this reappearing through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up, lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and calling sinners to repentance that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, on the night which he betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take drink, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of all your sins. This do as oft as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
us sing now. Then unc demit us, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace. give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Let us pray. We thank thee our Heavenly Father that you have refreshed us through this solitary gift and we implore you of your mercy that you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward thee and in fervent love to one another. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We sing our last hymn. Please be seated.
Thank mm-hmm. you.